You are now listening to Chakras and Shotguns. Welcome to Chakras and Shotguns, the podcast that guides you on a journey of spiritual development and personal preparedness. I'm Mick, a marketer, energy healer, and prepper. And I'm Jen, a former lawyer, real estate investor, and tarot card reader. Mm. Candles are important throughout a lot of religions and spiritual practices, but what is the right way to utilize them in your own practice? We'll talk today about how to work with candles and use them to manifest your desires. But before we jump into that, I got to do a little moment of bragging on my boo. She is a super dope tarot card reader. We've had quite a few listeners recently book with her and she did not disappoint them at all. I'm fortunate because I live with her. <laughs> I can pretty much get a tarot card reading whenever I ask for one. Recently, I was being kind of stubborn. but She gave me some insight about my men's retreat. And how I needed to basically just like let go of control and not try to do everything according to the script that I had in my head. And you know, I was resistant to it. I was like, nah, I got this idea of what, what it's going to look like. And it's going to look like this. And this is how it needs to be done. And then during the actual men's retreat a couple of weeks ago, there were some challenges that kind of came up. Things weren't going quite to plan. And I was starting to feel myself get frustrated. But then I like thought back to the reading. She was like, yo, just let go doesn't have to be the exact same as it was the first retreat. And so, you know, I just took a few deep breaths, let it go, and just, you know, remembered what she was trying to communicate to me. And ultimately, she was spot on. Retreat went really well. I just kind of let things go with the flow. And it was successful, and people loved it. So, anyway, my point is, go get you one of those tarot card readings. Like the, like the chicken salad lady, you know? It's a chicken salad. It's a chicken salad. <laughs> chicken salad. <laughs> Got to get you one of these. Go get one <laughs> with Jean. You can book one with her at chakrasandshotguns.com slash readings. Thanks, Bill. But I have to ask, is that what I sound like? You got to let go. Is that what I sound like? That's how you sound in my head. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So you ready to do some breath work? Yes. I think your story is is good inspiration to jump off of. All right. We're going to do some some letting go. It's something I've been thinking about a lot. As part of my yoga teacher training, we have to create and create a whole hour long flow, like an hour long class. And so the theme that I've been playing with in my head is also about letting go. So find a comfortable seat. Relax, lay down, you know the vibes. All right. If you can, put one hand on your belly, one hand on your heart. My fave. Just to ground yourself and feel your body. So many, we spend so much time detached from our body and in our heads. And I, I like to put a hand on my belly and a hand on my heart just to kind of come back into myself. Let's take a deep breath, inhale, breathing first into your belly, filling your belly, then filling your lungs, holding at the top, and then exhale that breath out through your mouth. Let's do that again, inhaling in through your nose, feeling your belly push against your hand as you fill it up, feeling that inhale breath fill up your lungs, and then exhale that breath out through your mouth. Last one we're going to do together, inhaling in through your nose. You're feeling yourself ground a little deeper into the earth if you're sitting or laying down. Maybe rolling your shoulders up to your ears and then down your back. And let's exhale that breath back out through the nose. Now that we're aware of our breath, 
Let's think of one thing that we're going to let go today. Whether that's your expectations for how this day, this week, this month is going to go. Or something from your past that maybe you're dwelling on that's not really serving you anymore. That as you think about it, your body relives it. Maybe it's a worry about the future, even though you're not there yet. And let's relinquish that. Maybe visualize yourself setting that on fire, that memory or that feeling or however it has a hold on you that's keeping you from being present and being in the moment. Maybe you visualize yourself letting that feeling, that thought go while you kneel on the side of a river and watch it go downstream away from you. Maybe it's control that you need to let go of. You're trying to control a situation, an outcome, a person, yourself, but you're not surrendering to the moment and the present. Keep focusing on your breathing And maybe also how you feel in this moment. Do you feel lighter? A little bit more free? Give yourself some gratitude for giving yourself the space to create more space in your life for the things that serve you. Maybe smile to yourself. All right, let's get into the show. Thanks, Jen. Let's jump into our main topic, talk a little candles and candle magic. Mm, Candles. I love burning a good candle. I love, let's see, one of my favorite brands, Nest. Great, great candles. Lilabo, amazing. The Pettigrain is obscenely good. Yeah, we got this whole cabinet in table thing that Jen has basically taken over with her candle collection. That's not fair. There's <laughs> candles and Legos in there. Yes. I mean, we had to find some space for some Legos, so we did have to move some things around. <laughs> I'm just saying, you open that thing, try to get some Legos out, and you just get hit with like 16 different aromas. Well, some of those are also gifts <laughs> to me. Maybe I should re-gift them if this is offending your sensibilities. <laughs> Anyway, let's get back to the point. We're talking about candle magic. I know it sounds a little bit like something from the Salem Witch Trials, the Craft, American Horror Story Coven or something, but really it's just burning a candle and setting an intention over it. And so you're you're focusing your energy on the candle and just using the energy of that burning flame to fuel that intention. And I was thinking about like, how candles are used in religious services. And I was like, man, back in the day, I used to be an acolyte, Mm. you know, come down and light the altar candles. And I feel like it's the same idea, right? Like we had this intention, this prayer around what we were doing with lighting of those candles at the beginning Mm. of service and distinguishing at the end. Like it's the same vibes. You know, that's a very Methodist, maybe even Catholic, because, you know, sometimes they... Yeah. They were sisters. Yeah. Um, That's where the name comes from. Like, they literally were like, yo, we want to still rock with the Catholic Church. But we want to do a new method. And that's where a Methodist um, comes from. Fun fact. Fun Thank fact. you. Yeah. I I grew up Baptist mm-hmm. for like, until I was like 14. Then we went to like a non-denominational church. Mm-hmm. But I was often a visitor of Methodist Church because like my extended family were all Methodist on, mm-hmm. my, on my mom's side. And this sounds very serious, but one thing I did want to point out is that how come in every Methodist church I went to that had the acolyte situation, those robes were always too short? They needed to be versatile. So you might have somebody who was like, you know, seven, rock the, rock the joint, and then... 
I had to wear two <laughs> and I was like 12. <laughs> So it's like, like a crop top. <laughs> it's like if it hit the knees, you're just like, oh, okay. Y'all couldn't get like two long ones. It was only two of them. The resources and the building fund, they just didn't have enough for all that. It's probably racism. It probably is. But yes, in all seriousness, it is all about your intention. And we hear that word a lot. It comes up in yoga, usually at the beginning of the practice to set an intention, whether it's gratitude or energy or abundance, whatever. But so candle magic is just another way to use your intention, right? Yeah. The intention that you have for your candle, you know, it can be for a variety of things. It could be love. It could be abundance, prosperity, protection, healing, even trying to reverse maybe some negative energy thrown your way. You know, people say hexes and curses and things like that, right? Like throwing back some of that, that energy, that someone may be trying to throw at you. I don't know why that made me think of cha-cha slide. Reverse, reverse. <laughs> so let's say you have an intention and you want to get a candle to work with. Where do you start? One thing that you can do is choose a candle color that matches the intention you want to set. We've talked in previous episodes about the power of colors and have discussed the colors associated with the chakras, of course. The significance of colors is no different when it comes to candles. The The meanings might not exactly match up with the chakra colors, but we'll get into it. And before we really dive into that, I did want to say like on this journey, on the spiritual journey, you hear a lot of like, this is what you need and, the, and you have to follow these steps. And if you don't do this on the first of every month or the full moon or the new moon or mm. et cetera, et cetera. And so sometimes it can get, for me, overwhelming and feeling like you have to be OCD about it and almost anal retentive about it, about following everything just so mm-hmm. to bring in what you want. But, and we kind of talked about this on another episode, that's a very kind of masculine approach to it, yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. And, we're all about getting in more in touch with our intuition and that's a little bit more fluid and free flowing. Mm-hmm. And so I think the thing that I want to set the tone, my intention for mm-hmm. this episode is that really when it comes down to it, you are the magic. Mm-hmm. And these things to me are guides and helpful tools mm-hmm. for you to tune in to the magic and the intuition that you have inside of you. Absolutely. Everything is a tool that can be used to help enhance or, or uh, basically amplify what you're already putting out there, mm-hmm. right? So let's get into the colors. Let's start with red. Red candles are associated with passion, love, sexuality. They can be used to increase passion in a relationship or attract a new lover. And red candles can also be used for strength courage and vitality so i got a secret to tell you jen okay you want to tell me on the microphone on the podcast while i mean you know just throw it out there see how you respond you uh, might like it you know what i'm saying okay so you know you went to back to texas to mm-hmm. work on one of your your real estate projects mm-hmm. for a couple of days and i was i was missing you i was like man i want my boo to come back you know what i'm saying i said you know when she get back it's gonna be on and popping i'm gonna burn this red candle to enhance that magic. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I burn me a little red candle. You doing magic on me? Mm, a little bit. A little bit. And then when you got back, remember it was on and popping. Oh you know what I'm saying? You know yeah, I guess it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> now look, we got two kids already, okay? Hey, I know. I know. I know. Just practicing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's move on to the color orange. So orange candles are associated with creativity, joy, and success. Kind of lines up a little bit with the sacral chakra there. They can be used to increase creativity and inspiration or to attract success in business or career endeavors. So I got a secret to tell you. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. I I didn't burn a candle for you. (laughs) Is that why business is booming? (laughs) Moving on to yellow, getting our Roy G. Biv on today. (laughs) Yellow candles are associated with intellect, communication, and clarity. They can be used to increase mental clarity, improve communication skills, and enhance memory. Mm. Might be helpful for like an exam. Yeah, yeah. Or, 
you feel like something not clicking when you're talking to somebody? <laughs> like, what's not what's not clicking? Yeah, my story with the yellow candle. I was in the store. I go to the dollar store to get my my candles. Hey, and they they always have a nice little selection of the votive candles in the glass. So. I was like, I need a candle. I want to burn a candle during our little plant medicine micro dosing ceremony that we're going to do at the end of the retreat. And so I was just like drawn to the to the yellow candle that I saw. And I was like remembering what yellow was associated with. And it, it all made sense, right? Because in that ceremony, we were doing a little bit of micro dosing. And I wanted, my intention was really around folks getting some insight by going within. But then I also wanted them to have this clarity and this you know, remembrance of what was coming up for them. Mm. And it was, it was great for that. Like I burned that candle and there were so many things people were, were learning and writing down in their journal and taking with them. So it had its intended effect. Okay. Um. Yeah. So let's move on to green. Green candles are associated with abundance, prosperity, and fertility. They can be used to attract financial abundance. Interesting. That's, particularly interesting because not all money is green hmm. is this the american agenda <laughs> i don't know i don't know that's propaganda what they, that's what they that spiritual girls be saying so i don't okay. know blue blue candles are associated with peace tranquility and harmony any intentions around peace in your home or calming in anxiety can be enhanced with a blue candle mm. Reminds me of like water, right? Like mm -hmm. just like ocean. floating. Yeah, floating. Yeah, yeah, I'm with it. I'm with it. Purple candles, they are associated with spiritual awareness, intuition, and psychic ability. Now, we've talked a lot in the past about how the color associated with the third eye chakra is indigo, which is like that blue purplish color. And the crown chakra is associated with violet. And yeah, I think it makes sense. You know, you use this purple candle with the intention of like tapping into that divine wisdom. You know, you can really accelerate that energy. Mm. Black, because I'm black, y'all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> black candles are associated with protection and banishing negative energy. They can be used to also protect against psychic attacks. And that sounds very nefarious. So what are psychic attacks, you may ask? They are mental intrusions Efforts from free floating energies or specific people to enter your psyche and make some kind of detrimental impact or extract information. Basically, it's like hating ass energy. Mm -hmm. And it can pop up in dreams or present as anxiety or fatigue, you know, nightmares, night terrors. So the tricky thing for me here is you might be like, oh, I'm really tired. Somebody must be hating on me. Or you don't go to sleep because you're on TikTok until 2 a.m. every night. But like, you know, like you, it's it's a specific type of feeling. Like I had a person keep popping up in my dreams and just being like really nefarious. When nefarious is my favorite word today. When I really was not thinking about this person at all. And so I had to really, and I don't know if it was intentional or not, but I had to really kind of make sure I had some more protective stones around me burning a black candle would have been a great way to also banish that that negative energy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked about the black stones being protective as well. So like tourmaline and onyx and obsidian. Black candle, same vibes. Mm -hmm. I think also another note on that, and I think this comes up with a lot of people who feel like they're very empathic and they're like, I'm an empath and I'm picking up on all, all this energy. This is why I'm a big proponent of really coming into your body and like knowing what's yours and what isn't. Cause I think it, that can also help you drill down on like, Hey, I think there's something being thrown my way mm. that maybe I need to do something about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So white candles, white candles are often used for purification and cleansing. They represent purity, clarity, and spiritual growth. White candles can be used for protection and healing. And in addition, a white candle is super versatile. It's like a blank canvas. If you want to use it in the same way as another color candle, maybe you couldn't find, like I was at the dollar store, I couldn't find a green candle, but I wanted to welcome in some abundance. I just got a white candle and you basically can reprogram 
that white candle by just writing the color that you want it to be on it. Now, so I know that sounds a little bit janky. Because <laughs> Jen did come in and see my little white candle in that bowl and it had green written on it. She was like, <laughs> what is this, paint by numbers? Like, what is going on? It's very ghetto to me. <laughs> but you can do that. That's what they say on, on the spiritual web, you know? And I'm not mad about that because yeah. I think that further underscores my earlier point that you're the magic. Exactly. The, you just made this white candle green it was by actually, your intention. It was actually this Reiki master that told me that, actually. I didn't read that on the internet. So, you know, I'm, I'm a trust what she, she's been trained in a bunch of stuff. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a rock with what she told me. So now you have your candle color picked. You're at the crib. Do people still say crib? I'm at the crib. Do people say that? I don't know, man. Mick wrote this. You're at home <laughs> and, you know, he's a little older than me. And you're ready to burn your candle. <laughs> Play me. Sorry. What are some things that you should do? Some very basic things. If you bought a pillar candle, meaning it did not come enclosed in glass, it's just out here naked, make sure that you have a container to burn it in safely. And so you want to think of something that's like, could I put it in the oven? Could I put it in the microwave? Something ceramic, maybe something like a heavier dish. I would not not like really thin glass. I wouldn't do something like that. So some other things you are going to want to do with that candle. As I mentioned, I get my candles from the dollar store and they oftentimes have a plastic wrap on them. So I take that plastic wrap off. You want to take off any labels that may be on there. You also want to trim down the wick. This is important because if you don't trim down the wick, you could get what's called a dirty flame and it can actually like in the in the votive candles, you'll get some blackening around the rim of the glass and you want it to be a nice clean smooth flame so you want to trim that down to about one fourth inch and yeah there's, you can just use some scissors if you that's all you have but there's some nice little wick trimmers that are out there on the market yeah you can find them on amazon we'll link some then you want to cleanse the candle with a, a damp cloth or with a, a cleansing spray you know, maybe it's Florida water, some essential oils. You can use like some lavender or frankincense just to, you know, cleanse your, cleanse your candle up nice and, and good. Now we're going to get into what people often refer to as dressing your candle. And we're not talking about Hidden Valley. This includes carving or inscribing your intention onto the candle using a sharp tool such as a knife or a toothpick. So you want to write protection or money or health or confidence, whatever. Anoint the candle with oil or melted wax. You can use any oil that corresponds with your intention, such as lavender oil for love or prosperity oil for abundance. And you want to rub the oil onto the candle using your hands or a soft cloth and focusing your energy and intention on your desired income. Outcome, rather. Income, outcome, whatever you want to, <laughs> whatever you try trying to do. <laughs> and so, like, if you're using herbs or crystals in your spell work, roll the candle in the herbs or, which would be, it's almost like a marinade. You're really cooking here, okay? Because you, like, you know, put some oil on it. You're going to ro- roll it around in some herbs. This is, should be called seasoning your candle. Okay. <laughs> it's like stuffing versus dressing. Exactly. <laughs> if you know, you know. And you can place the crystals around the base of the candle at the bottom. I've seen people put herbs like, you know, really like sprinkling their herbs on the top before they light the flame. So remember, you're the magic. So like, you know, be present in the moment. You're focusing very intently. This is not something you do with Real Housewives on in the background. Mm -hmm. You're focusing on what you're trying to call in, what your intention is as you're doing this work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got your candle dressed up and seasoned, as Jen said. Now it's time to to light that bad boy. So It's time to cook. Yeah, let's make it happen. So light the candle and you want to let it burn all the way down. Or if you have a specific intention in mind, maybe it's like a set period of time that you want to let it go. Maybe it's, you know, a day or a few hours. And you really want to try to leave it alone. And so going back to what Jen said earlier about having that bowl of water, for safety reasons, you know, if the flame were to jump uh, off of the off the candle, you have that bowl of water around it to uh, hopefully catch any of those embers that may may come off the, the candle. So that's what we always do. You know, we want to make sure we're being safe when we're burning candles all the way to their their end. 
Um, and also, while that candle is burning, though, you want to spend some time with it. You want to visualize your intention, manifesting, imagine the energy of the, the candle and that flame, you know, just carrying your intention out into the universe. If you do have to extinguish the candle before it's done burning all the way or before your, your time period is up, do not blow it out. Now, I've never done like a a scientific test or anything on this, right? I'm going by advice from mentors and other spiritualists. And they basically say that blowing it out blows away its benefits. So how do you extinguish a candle if you don't blow it out? What do you do? So like back in the day when I was an acolyte, we had this little like, almost like a little bell that didn't have like a little thing in in the middle. Mm -hmm. Place it on on top real slow. You snuffed the candle. There you go. I didn't know what that was called. The bell without the thing in it. Mm Mm-hmm. They never taught me what it was called. They were just like, go up there and put that on top of the camera. They also didn't give you a robe that fit. Resources. <laughs> Limited. <laughs> we have one of those candle snuffers. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of, you know, if you just got to come up with something. Maybe like a jar mm-hmm. that you can put over it and like remove oxygen from the flame. Just just get creative, but don't but don't blow it out. It makes you think about birthday candles. I don't blow out birthday candles, but that was more so because of health concerns. (laughs) Pre-COVID-19, I saw somebody spit all over that cake. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do that anymore. And I hope nobody else does that to me. But I also don't blow my spiritual candles out. So I think that sums up candle magic it's very interesting i hope it didn't Mm -hmm. get too spooky um too witchy but it's it's life is an experiment try Mm -hmm. it out see if it works for you yeah no it's an important part of our practice we burn candles on our ancestor altar to you know it's like almost like a a doorbell they say when it Mm -hmm. comes to like working on your ancestor altar so lighting that candle to initiate that connection so it's something we do and wanted to just give you that you can give you guys some some tips on how to work with candles but before we go i gotta do one more plug for my boo in (laughs) case you missed it earlier go to chakras and shotguns.com slash readings and get you a tarot card reading with jen or she can even do a human design chart reading which is super fascinating and she nerds out on it and just loves talking to people about their human design so Check those out. You can also book an energy healing session with Mick. Chakras and shotguns dot com slash readings. I know the I know the website. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, if you're loving the show, please subscribe and give us five stars wherever you listen. Namaste.